we finally reach the end of our fault line here in Greece, where it plunges down into the sea. These lines etched into the cliff face are the former levels of the sea that's been left stranded as the land has risen in a series of earthquake jumps. Now here, those earthquake jumps are a matter of tens of centimetres, but in truly giant quakes, they're the order of a few metres. And that brings me to my final story. The story of the most powerful and violent kind of earthquakes that can happen on Earth. They're called megathrust earthquakes. This particular story is about one coast where a megathrust earthquake happened in the past and where we know one will happen again. The people of California live under a terrible shadow. They know that one day the San Andreas Fault will rupture, unleashing an enormous earthquake. But all this time, an even more powerful hazard lies just a little further north. It's a completely different fault, and it's going to unleash an earthquake up to 30 times more devastating than anything the San Andreas Fault can produce. The source of all this danger lies deep beneath the waters of the Pacific Northwest coast. It's a huge gash in the Earth's crust that's nearly a thousand kilometres long. It runs from British Columbia in Canada and ends in Northern California. It's called the Cascadia Fault. The Cascadia Fault lies on what geologists call a subduction zone. A subduction zone is where two giant plates meet head to head and one of them gets pushed right down under the other. Subduction zones can produce the biggest earthquakes on the planet. Generally speaking, if you have two great masses of rock and you're scraping them one underneath the other, they're not going to move very easily. You're going to get a lot of friction there. And I, I liken it to sort of two cheese graters pushing past one another. Very, very difficult to get any smooth sort of movement there. Subduction zones cause earthquakes when the plate that's being pushed down gets stuck. As it pushes, the upper plate gets squeezed and distorted. Eventually, the strain becomes too much. The upper plate slips, and that's what creates a rare event, a megathrust earthquake. The power of an earthquake depends on the size of the fault that breaks. And there's something unique about subduction zone earthquake faults. With most earthquakes, only one small part of a fault line shifts, the part that's snagged. The section that breaks can cause violent shaking and devastation in the immediate area. But when a subduction fault ruptures, something quite different happens. It can unzip along the entire length of the fault line for hundreds of kilometres. The effect goes way beyond the reach of any normal earthquake event. The Cascadia subduction zone is almost a thousand kilometres long. If it does rupture along its full length, then scientists believe the next Cascadia earthquake will be one of the largest ever recorded, a magnitude 9 or greater. That's a terrifying prospect for the people of the Pacific region. When the Cascadia Fault ruptures, the shock waves will fan out across the whole northwest coast of the continent. And lying directly in its path are major cities like Vancouver, Seattle and Portland. But it's not just its power that would be so devastating. As the fault ruptures, it will unzip at over 10,000 kilometres an hour. Even at that speed, it will take five minutes to travel the entire length of the fault line. A five-minute earthquake is far longer than normal. duration of the event is, is very unusual uh, in, and in that sense alone it can cause more damage. Uh, a quake that goes on for longer causes more damage generally than one that, that is over within 10 or 20 seconds. And the big question is, when will it happen? Forecasting earthquakes is notoriously difficult 
and no one can say when Cascadia will rupture again. But it's possible to look back at the geological record and see how frequently they've happened in the past. Sure enough, the Washington coast does hold traces of several past megathrust earthquakes. In the United States, tree rings, Native American legends and geological evidence all indicate that the Cascadian fault line has ruptured five times in the last two and a half thousand years. So when will it happen next? You can calculate that according to when it last ruptured. And according to the geological record, the last time that happened was in 1700. That's 300 years ago. And in the past, it has ruptured at roughly 300 year intervals. So the next Cascadia earthquake could be just around the corner. We just don't know. And for the people of the Pacific coast, that's a pretty troubling thought to live with. It seems to me that earthquakes will always bring devastation to our planet. We certainly can't prevent them. We still can't even predict them. Earthquake science is still a long way to go if that's ever going to change. In the meantime, all we can do is build for earthquakes and learn to live with them. Next tonight, stay with us for the final instalment of The Bridge in just a few moments. <laughs>